Hi, I'm Cliff Curry. I'm the superintendent of Red Bluff Elementary. I wanted to give uh, our stakeholders, parents, staff, and the community a little update on our planning process. Uh, you're probably starting to hear from the county. As superintendents, we have been working together with the local uh, Board of Health, local health department, uh, the local health service agency uh, to collaborate on the kinds of guidance that uh, we are given for reopening schools. Uh, you may remember that we talked last month about three different scenarios. We were looking at distance learning uh, for next year. We were also looking at the hybrid model for next year. And lastly, we were looking at 100% uh, loading or every student every day at school. Uh, what we do know is that under any of these scenarios, it's not going to be just like it was before COVID-19 came. All of these scenarios require us to make adjustments based on the reality of COVID-19 in our community and, and potentially in our schools. I want to review the chain of command. We are given guidance from the federal, from the state, and from local health authorities. Those doctors and epidemiologists are the ones that have tracked uh, diseases. They are the ones making recommendations for the best way to mitigate the spread of that disease. Now, they're learning uh, many times things that are new coming out, new symptoms, new ways of uh, preventing the spread, but we do know some things already, and so a lot of the guidance that we have is based on that. When we return in August, uh, we should remember that the current conditions in our community of the COVID-19 uh, virus are going to dictate w which scenario that we open with. Uh, so it's going to pay us as a community to really pay attention to how we can mitigate the spread of that virus if we want to prioritize students coming back. In order to reopen with every student every day, there are some requirements that schools must follow. We've been working on site-based plans. We've been working on district-level plans. The district-level plans really describe the federal, state, and local guidance for mitigating the spread of COVID-19. And I want to share with you what some of those plans are going to look like when you apply them to the campuses and the students and the, and the schools when we reopen. Uh, number one, we will have some plans for arrival. How students arrive is going to become important because we need to do health screenings every day with every person that comes onto the campus. That means we're going to be taking temperature, we're going to be uh, asking a few health-related questions, nothing personal, but things like have you had a cough, have you thrown up, Things like that will help us screen students that might be infected with COVID-19. We would ask parents to pay attention uh, as students come to school, and if you have access to a thermometer, 100.4 is the cutoff for that temperature. If students are found in uh, coming into school that have that temperature, if parents aren't there to take them home, we're going to have to isolate them in isolation rooms, uh, keep them spread out to make sure that they uh, aren't infecting other students or, or folks that are around. So this will be one of those aspects that is not like school as per usual. Uh, the second thing we're going to do, uh, you know, with students uh, in a classroom, we're not going to be able to socially distance um, to the extent that we would like. But what we can do is isolate classes from each other in cohorts. So in other words, we're going to keep one student group from mixing with another to the extent that we can. That means that students will be eating lunch together separate from other classes. They will be going to the playground and recreating and being out in the playground uh, in areas separate from other classes. They will be coming back. They will be practicing frequent hand washing. We're going to be spending a lot of time washing hands at transition times when students leave and come back to classrooms. We have outfitted a lot of rooms with hand pump sanitizers. So we're making every effort to retrofit, to have a lot of hand washing sinks, our schools. Um, we're doing all these things because these are the mitigations that are required in order for every student to come back every day. The last thing I need to mention as one of the mitigations that's required in order to load every student every day are face coverings. Staff and students must be wearing face coverings uh, during school. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy out there about face coverings. But what I can tell you is that there's no controversy as it applies to being able to reopen schools. In order to bring 100% of the students back every day, every student and staff member must wear face coverings. So I know that's difficult for some people and they ask, my student's not going to be able to do that and they, I don't like wearing them. 
But this isn't a matter of opinion, this is a matter of practice, this is a matter of working towards a goal of every student, every day. In order to do that, because we can't social distance at our sites universally all the time, we must have students and staff wearing face coverings. Parents can help their students by beginning to get them comfortable with wearing face masks. But I want to emphasize this point, we want every student back every day. This is what we have to do in order to make it happen. So uh, we appreciate parents following through on that and assisting with it. The district will be providing face masks for students and for staff. The state is saying that they're going to be providing us with uh, some number of them. We want to make sure that they last. Um, you've probably all heard stories about how difficult it is out there to get hold of some of these um, personal protective gear um, like face coverings. So please uh, make sure you keep track of masks as they come home. Make sure students reuse them as appropriately uh, as they can. And um, we're going to get through the year have, hopefully having enough of a supply for every student and staff member every day. Stay tuned for the specific site instructions uh, for, for your student school. They will be talking about things like how arrival will work, at what times they would like different groups of students to arrive. We haven't hammered those out completely um, because uh, the logistics of that are difficult because each campus is a little bit different in terms of how many entrances they have or how many drop-off zones they're going to use. So stay tuned for that. Those answers will be coming. And lastly, I just want to remind you as parents uh, and as stakeholders of this district that our wider community can really support us by suppressing the spread of this virus in our community. As I said, the conditions in August in the community of the virus are going to determine which of the scenarios that we adopt coming back. It's very important that everybody out there do what they can personally to mitigate the spread of this virus. We will continue to give you updates as we get new information and as we refine the information that we have for school reopening. And I just wanted to say thank you and keep uh, hanging in there with this uh, difficult time. What I do know is that we have the capability to get through it, that we can support each other, and that we can um, care for our neighbors and for the people that we see that are part of this community. So please help us do that so that we can flatten the spread of this virus so that we can get our students back into school where they need to be. Thank you.